Hi everyone, I am Dr. Vithika Singh. Today I am going to talk about the anatomy of knee joint. As we know, the knee joint is one of the most complex joint in our body. Now, whenever we talk about any joint, we talk about its anatomy, what all we discuss. First, we talk about what are the bones which form the joint, right? Then what type of joint it is. Then we talk about the muscles, the ligaments, the supporting structures it, uh, which support the joint. And then we talk about the blood supply and the nerve supply of the joint and what are the functions of the joint, what is the degree of freedom of the joint and what are the functions it performs. Okay, so let's start with joint. Okay, so first we'll talk about what are the bones which are forming the knee joint. So it is formed by three bones. Your femur, the lower part of your femur, upper part of your tibia and patella. Now, uh, it, uh, it has three bones, like three bones are forming the joint and it has three joints, three, basically three joints make uh, one joint that is your knee joint. Three, uh, knee joint is formed of three joints. One is your medial tibiofemoral joint, then your lateral tibiofemoral joint and your patellofemoral joint. Okay. Remember that there is no patellotibial joint. The knee joint has tib two uh, tibiofemoral joints and one patellofemoral joint. Now this is the, uh, these are the bones which are forming the knee joint. Now we talk about that what type of joint it is. It is a synovial joint. You must have read that there are different types of joints and then the knee joint it is a type of synovial joint. Okay. It's a synovial joint means it's, it has a synovial membrane, it has a capsule and it, uh, it has synovial fluid in it. So it's a synovial type of joint. But synovial joint also has various types of joint. Like there are various types of joints which are uh, the part of synovial joint. So in knee joint, you have basically two types of joint. One is your condylar joint. The one which is formed between the tibia and the femur. That is your condylar joint. Because it is formed between the condyles of your tibia and your femur. Okay. Then second is your saddle joint. Saddle joint, uh, you must have read that saddle, it is called saddle because it's like the saddle over the horse. Like if you must have seen ki it's a ghoda jo hota hai, uske upar bethne ke liye ek aise bana hota hai, jo concave hota hai, convex hota hai, this is called, that is called saddle. Right? So, jo humara patellofemoral joint hai, wo us shape mein hota hai. It's in the shape of saddle, so it is a saddle joint. Both of them are synovial joint. Okay? So this is the type of uh, joint. Now we'll talk about, little we'll talk about the articular surfaces of all the joints. What is articular surface? Like articular surface are those parts of your bone which are articulating, which are coming together to form a joint. So in tibia, uh, in femur, first we'll talk about femur. It is superior. Okay. So uh, femur, the lower part of your femur, it has condyles, it has epicondyles. So the condyles, both the condyles of your femur, the medial condyle and the lateral condyle, they both form the part of knee, they both form knee joint. Similarly, in tibia, you have two condyles, the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. They both also join with the condyles of femur to form the knee joint. Now we'll talk about patella. So patella is your largest sesamoid bone in your body. You must be knowing this. Uh, sesamoid bone, what is sesamoid bone? Sesamoid bone is a bone which is formed inside a tendon. We'll talk about uh, like uh, which tendon uh, patella has, like uh, which tendon, patella is formed over which tendon. Okay, we'll talk about that later. But remember that patella is one of the, lar is the largest sesamoid bone in your body. If you know what are other sesamoid bones in a body, write in the comment section. Okay. Now it is triangular in shape. Triangle, a triangle has an apex also. So its apex is pointed downwards. The base, hota hai, base is upwards and the apex is downwards. Right. Now in, but, uh, uh, any bar, bar, bone has an interior surface also and posterior surface also. So the posterior surface of your patella it articulates with your femur, femoral joint. The anterior surface is not articulated. Okay? It means that the posterior point surface is patella. So, that is your 
बोन्स के साथ जुड़ के जॉइंट बनाता है जो आगे का सर्फिस जो इंटीरियर सर्फिस होता है हमारा पटेला का वो जॉइंट नहीं बनाता है उसके ऊपर से हमारे टेंडन्स जाते हैं हमारे लिगामेंट्स जाते हैं हमारे मसल्स जाते हैं राइट सो दिस इज योर पटेला नेक्स्ट विल टॉक अबाउट द लिगामेंट्स वेरियस लिगामेंट्स ऑफ योर नी जॉइंट बिफोर टॉकिंग अबाउट लिगामेंट्स फर्स्ट विल टॉक अबाउट द कैप्स्यूल बिकॉज इट इज अल जॉइंट जॉइंट हैज अ कैप्स्यूल राइट सो इट ऑल्सो हैज अ फाइब्रस कैप्स्यूल कैप्स्यूल कैप्सूल कवर्स होल जॉइंट सो अब सुपीरियरली इट इज अटैच थर्टी हाफ सेंटीमीटर अब योर आर्टिकुलेटिंग सर्फेस ऑफ योर फीमर सिमिलरली बिलो इट इज कनेक्टेड फ्यू सेंटीमीटर्स बिलो द आर्टिकुलेटिंग सर्फेस ऑफ योर टिबिया ओके तो जो पूरा का पूरा आपका आर्टिकुलर सर्फेस है वो आपका उस कैप्सूल के अंदर आ जाता है ना Uh, जो हम वी हैव टू रिमेम्बर थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट वेन वील टॉक वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द कैप्स्यूल ऑफ योर फिमोरल फिमोरल पार्ट ओके फिमोरल अटैचमेंट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर थ्री थिंग्स फर्स्ट द कैप्स्यूल इट लैक्स इंटीरियरली इंटीरियरली आपका जो कैप्स्यूल होता है वो कमजोर होता है वो कम होता है क्यों उसका रीजन है बिकॉज इंटीरियरली यू हैव पटेला योर बोन इंटीरियरली यू हैव लेगमेंट्स इंटीरियरली यू हैव मसल्स they all are supporting the joint that's why uh, जो आपका joint होता है it lacks the capsule anteriorly now it is attached uh, the capsule is at posteriorly it is attached to the intercondylar line intercondylar line what it is आपका जो femur होता है it has condyles and then it has a condylar notch intercondylar notch okay you तो उस कॉन्डाइलर नॉच के ऊपर जो आपका इंटरकॉन्डाइलर लाइन होता है वहां से पीछे की तरफ आपका कैप्सूल अटैच होता है प्लस इट आल्सो इंक्लोज योर पॉपुलेटियस मसल ओके जो आपका जॉइंट कैप्सूल होता है नी जॉइंट का इट इंक्लोज योर पॉपुलेटियस मसल सो दीज आर द थ्री थिंग्स विच यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर फॉर द फेमरल पार्ट ऑफ योर कैप्सूल ओके नाउ दिस इज द कैप्सूल नेक्स्ट विल टॉक अबाउट लेगामेंटम पटेली फॉर लेगामेंट फर्स्ट लेगामेंट वर टॉकिंग अबाउट इज लेगामेंटम पटेली Now what happens ki you know that anteriorly we have the quadriceps muscles it's a big group of muscle quadriceps muscles it's made up of four muscles right so the now all the muscle a muscle is not attached directly to the bone right it is attached via a tendon now the central jo uh, all the four mu- muscles of your quadriceps they form one common tendon and then it gets inserted to the tibia Now the central part of that common tendon is your ligamentum patelli. It runs over your patella and it is called ligamentum patelli. The other parts of your uh, this common tendon they form the median and the lateral retinaculum, right? Now next are your collateral ligaments. They are very important group of ligaments. In in knee you have to remember there are very uh, so many ligaments and all the ligaments are really important because they play a major role in stabilizing your knee joint. Okay, so now we will talk about the collateral ligaments. The collateral ligaments they uh, stabilize your knee from sideways movement. The valgus and the varus forces the knee joint, which uh, suffers like which have the varus and valgus forces suffers from them. It your collateral ligament stabilizes, balances your knee during these forces. Okay, so we have two collateral ligaments. One is your lateral collateral ligament, and one is your medial collateral ligament. now medial collateral ligament is also called tibial collateral ligament because it originates from your tibia and it uh, superiorly it attaches to the medial epicondyle of your femur right Con- in if you remember the anatomy of femur you have the condyles and then you have epicondyles to jo aapka medial collateral ligament hota hai wo aapka tibia se start hota hai because tibia medially hai aapki aur fibula aapki laterally hai so medially it starts from tibia that's why it is also called tibial collateral ligament it starts from tibia and goes upward and it gets attached to the medial epicondyle of your femur similarly you have the tibial collateral ligament or the lateral collateral ligament it starts from the head of fibula and it goes superiorly and it gets attached to the epicondyle of your femur okay lateral epicondyle of your femur now this is the these are the two collateral ligaments Next we have oblique popliteal ligaments. We have two ligaments. You, you can see that in the picture. 
you have two lig popliteal ligaments one is your oblique popliteal ligaments because it runs obliquely and then you have the arcuate popliteal ligaments because it's arc like shape okay so the your oblique popliteal ligament it is an expansion from the tendon of semi membranosus if you remember semi membranosus is one of the muscles forming your hamstrings right what are the other muscles of your hams write down in the comment section now it originates it's a, it's a tendon it's a, a, it's a tendon which is a part of semi membranosus muscle it runs upwards and goes laterally hmm, and it gets attached to your intercondylar line and the lateral condyle of your femur intercondylar line i have talked about so it gets attached to your intercondylar line next is your arcuate popliteal ligament it extends backward from the head of fibula it starts from your head of fibula it goes backwards it's forms an arcuate shaped structure and then it attaches it has two points of attachment like its insertion has two parts one part it like because it is an arc like structure right so one part is attached to your the lower this part is attached to your tibia and intercondylar area of the tibia and this part it gets attached to the lateral epicondyle of your femur right so these are uh, the ligaments then we have a very important group of ligament they are called uh, cruciate ligaments cruciate ligaments are important in maintaining the anterior posterior stability of your knee joint you must have heard many cases of acl injury acl injury is quite common okay so knee joint because like whenever you will see a case of acl injury you will the patient the most common complaint of the patient is ki mera pair jo hai wo aage ki taraf bhag raha hai whenever i try to walk jab main chalne ki koshish karta hu to mujhe aisa lagta hai ki mera pair jo hai wo aage ki taraf bhag raha hai the reason is your anterior cruciate leg uh, anterior cruciate ligaments it's help it it keeps your leg in a line like it it prevents it from going away okay that's why a patient with uh, this injury of acl complains that the he feels the that the leg is going away hmm? so anterior cruciate ligament dono cruciate ligament why because they have they we have two cruciate ligaments the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament why they are called cruciate because cruciate is something like cross like right so these cruciate ligaments they are uh, cross they form a cross like structure we have two of them one is your anterior cruciate ligament it's uh, uh, um, it originates from the anterior part of your tibia right and then uh, inter then it goes runs upwards both of the, the ligaments are starting from the tibia they go upwards then anterior cruciate ligament it goes upward backwards and laterally what happens ki see you have you know then in tibia you have two condyles and then you have one intercondyle the intercondylar area right so this uh, uh, anterior cruciate ligament it starts from the anterior part of your intercondylar area it goes upwards it goes backwards and it goes laterally right and then it attaches to the medial uh, sorry it attaches to the lateral condyle of your femur because it is going laterally so it attaches to the lateral condyle of femur now you have the posterior cruciate ligament the posterior cruciate ligament it it originates from the posterior part of your intercondylar area it goes upward it goes forward and it goes medially one is going both of them are going upward but one is going backward and laterally the other one is going forward and medially that's why they form the cruciate like structure right then uh, your anterior cruciate ligament it is taut during extension when you extend your knee the anterior cruciate ligament it gets taut and it prevents further extension similarly the posterior cruciate ligament it gets taut during flexion when you flex the knee it gets taut and it prevents further flexion of the knee now these were the ligaments of your joint now we'll talk about a very important structure that is your meniscus meniscus it's a fibrocartilaginous disc it's crescent shape that is it is c shaped it is attached to your tibia there are two meniscus in our knee and both of them are attached to the tibia okay now what is the function of the meniscus it's very important first of all your femoral condyles are bigger in shape larger and your tibial condyles are smaller so the meniscus what happens it increases the articulating area so it makes the joint more congruent right then you have uh, it also absorbs the shock 
like when when the whatever when we walk when we run when we jump we the our knee joint receives the shock and the meniscus it absorbs the shock so that to prevent the joint then it provides lubrication to your joint and the last function it has nerve supply also so it provides sensory function that is it provides the function of proprioception because it has a knee joint now we will little talk about the blood supply because uh, the it is a c shaped structure the outer part is your thicker the inner part is thinner the outer part has blood supply the inner part doesn't have a blood supply it gets nutrients from the salivary fluid that's why you will see uh, the medial the injury to the medial part is uh, difficult to heal because it doesn't have a blood supply while the outer part is easier to heal because it has a blood supply okay so these are the ligament and then you have one more ligament that is transverse ligament it connects both the uh, meniscus okay now we will talk about the various bursa of your knee joint you have bursa anteriorly and you have medially and you have laterally the bursa in the knee joint these were the bursa now we will talk about the blood supply of your knee joint genicular artery mainly provide the blood supply to the knee joint now the nerve supply of the knee joint Various nerves are your femoral nerve, tibial nerve, common peroneal, and obturator. Now various. Now we will talk about the various movements of the knee joint. It, the movements, various movements of flexion, then extension, then you have little medial rotation and lateral rotation, little valgus varus that is reduction and action. Mostly you can do flex. You can feel flexion extension, but the other movements are so small that you cannot feel it. You can feel it only while someone else is doing. Okay. So these are the movements of your knee joint. then i will just one last thing i'll talk about that is very important the locking and unlocking of the system of the knee joint your knee joint has a mechanism that is called locking by which it the knee is when the knee is fully extended then very minimal muscle and strength is required to keep your knee extended because the joint locks itself now uh, what happens ki when you extend the knee uh, when you extend when you sorry i cut so what happens when you extend your knee in the last 30 degrees your knee rotates medially it rotates little medially medial rotation occurs and because of which your knee joint gets fixed to one position and your the muscles and the ligaments are least required to keep the knee in that position now when we you have to flex you have to first laterally rotate your knee you don't do it intentionally it happens and the lateral rotation occurs uh, like uh, one there is one muscle the popliteus muscle which helps in laterally rotating that is unlocking the knee during the initial phase of your flexion and then when from complete extension when, when the lateral extension occurs the knee unlocks and then you flex the knee so this is one mechanism of the knee to prevent excessive work of your muscles or ligaments to keep the knee extended. so this was for the uh, this was all about the today's class the anatomy of a knee joint and uh, this is important to understand the biomechanics of your joint it's important to know the anatomy so as to know anything else so in the next class in the next lecture i'll try to talk about the biomechanics of your knee joint till then take care treat study well and have fun bye